Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on Galois theory. Okay, so, in this video what we're going to talk about is the degree of a field extension, okay, and I should have a the there, so the degree of a field extension, and then we're also going to talk about um, the tower law for field extensions, okay? So, the degree of a field extension, and then we'll move on to uh, the tower law, and we'll prove the tower law. Okay, right. Uh, so, we'll start off by defining what the degree of a field extension is. And this is going to um, need us to understand something about field extensions, basically. Okay, and this is a um, very simple concept. But it's remarkable how powerful this concept is going to be. This is going to help us get uh, a management on uh, field extensions, basically. So, let's say that L over K is a field extension, OK? So we have two fields, a field L and a field K. And basically, we then have a mapping of the field K into uh, the field L. And this is a ring monomorphism. So effectively, intuitively, you can think of L as containing K, as being an extension of K. So it's a bigger field that uh, has K as its uh, starting point, basically. Now, this incredibly uh, simple but incredibly powerful assertion is then that L basically is a vector space over K. So L was originally a field in its own right, but which contained as a subfield this field K. And now the claim is that L is going to be a vector space over K. Okay, and there's nothing special about this being a field extension of this. All that you need, basically, is one field with a subfield, basically, and then instantly the bigger field is a vector space over that smaller field. So L is a vector space over K. Okay, right. So let's understand why this is true, basically. Okay, so what are the axioms of a vector space? Well, basically, the starting axiom is that uh, the set, which is in this case L, L is the vector space, K is the field over which we're talking about this vector space. Okay, and L needs to be an abelian group, basically, under addition. So it needs to have an addition law, which is an abelian group. And so it does, basically. We know that because L is a field, you can add any two elements in that set together. And this addition does form an abelian group, because that's part of the field axiom. So tick that one off. Now, uh, you don't actually need a multiplication on this set in order to be a field. What instead you need is a scalar multiplication. So, you do not need to be able to multiply any two vectors together. No, all you need to be able to do is multiply every vector in this set by any element in this set here, k. Okay, and of course that's defined because k is just a subset of L. So all of the elements that are in L, so let's draw a picture. So here is L, effectively, a much bigger set. And then as a subset of it is k. Now L was a field, so you had an addition law on the entire thing and a multiplication law on the entire thing. So you could pick any two elements within this entire set L and multiply the two of them together. Now we're just limiting it down a bit. We're saying, OK, we don't need to be able to multiply any two elements together within L. All we need to do is, you know, have all of the elements of L along here and all of the elements of K along here, which is, of course, just a subset of L. And we need to have any element of K multiplied by any element of L. So let's say alpha, we'll call alpha an arbitrary element of K and we'll call x an arbitrary element of L. So we need to have defined alpha times x. And of course, we do have that defined, because alpha is fundamentally an element of L, because it's within k, OK? And therefore, you can multiply it by any other element in L, because L was originally a field. So we'll just use the same multiplication, basically. We'll just restrict it down a bit by saying, OK, I don't care about having the rest of the elements of L down here. I just care about having the elements of K there. 
Okay, so you need a scalar multiplication, and this scalar multiplication needs to obey certain properties in order for this to uh, be a vector space, okay? So let's have a look at the uh, axioms that it needs to obey in order to be uh, a vector space. So basically, one of the axioms is that if you take any element alpha, which is within our scalar field here, and multiply it by a vector x, added on to another vector y, so remember the vector space has an abelian group structure which is the addition law, so I can add any two vectors x and y together to get a third vector which I'll just call x plus y, and then I can multiply this third vector by alpha. Well basically the scalar multiplication needs to distribute over addition, so it needs to be alpha times x plus alpha times y. So you have to be able to multiply the two first by alpha. So take x, take y, so I'll put y here, and multiply them together to get two answers, alpha x and alpha y, and then add these two together. The answer that you get should be the same as if you do it the other way around, where you do the addition first and get some new vector, and then multiply that new vector by alpha. Okay, so we could put the new vector x plus y here, and then the answer to that is over here, somewhere. Okay, right. So why is this going to be true? Well, again, you just go back to field theory. Now, forget that we're talking about a vector space. Just remember that we're talking about this field, L. Alpha is an element of the field. X is an element of the field. Y is an element of the field. This law here works perfectly well because of the field axioms, okay? So we can say that this is true instantly because this is one of the axioms of field theory. Distributivity is an axiom of field theory, basically. So we can say that this holds true because of field theory. Okay, just remembering that K is within our field L. Okay, uh, right. The next axiom, so that's the first one, that scalar multiplication distributes over addition. The other is that because fundamentally the scalar field K is a field, we have an addition defined on K. So this is a field over here, so you can add two elements of K together. So let's say we take two um, elements of K, alpha and beta, and we add them together and then take the answer of that and multiply it by some vector in L, okay? So basically, if I draw another one of these scalar multiplication tables out, we've got some element alpha here, some element beta, we've combined them together, which we can do because K is a field and therefore has an addition and a multiplication law defined on it, and now we are multiplying them all by some element X, and we're taking alpha plus beta, the answer to alpha plus beta, and multiplying that by x and getting some answer. Well, basically, this should be the same as if we take alpha and multiply it by x and then add that in the uh, under the addition law within the vector space this time. So that's something to understand. This addition here is addition within the scalar field, basically. This addition here is going to be addition within the vector space, okay? Right, uh, so we'll take the answer to alpha times the vector x, and we'll add it to the answer beta times the vector x. So we'll get an answer alpha x, and an answer beta x, and we'll add these two together, and we hope that this is going to be the same as this, okay? And that is one of the axioms of a vector space. So, how are we going to prove that? Well, again, it just follows instantly from field theory. L is a field. All of these elements are within L, because remember, alpha and beta are within K, and K is a subset of L. Okay, so, um, this holds true in field theory, so we get that that's true instantly, just because of the axioms of field theory, just because field theory obeys distributivity. Okay, right, so, third axiom then. Okay, the third axiom is that if you take two elements in this um, field K, and this time multiply them together. So take two elements, alpha and beta, and multiply them together, which you can do because K is a field, and then multiply that by some vector X within the uh, vector space L. Then again, that should be the same as if you first multiply beta by X, and then multiply the answer to that by alpha. So let me summarize this with our little multiplication table. So if we have alpha and beta here, 
then we can also find the answer to alpha times beta because of course k is a field so of course you can multiply alpha and beta together okay and basically if you take the answer to what alpha times beta is within k and multiply that um, by the vector x then that will give you some other vector in L and that should be the same as if you first multiply uh, x by beta to get some new vector beta of x well beta times x and then you multiply this vector beta times x then by the uh, scalar alpha okay so this answer over here should be the same as this answer over here basically okay now again this just occurs trivially because L is a field which contains K so alpha and beta are all in L and this then is just multiplicative associativity in the field L so that holds true instantly basically okay so because we have defined our scalar multiplication to just be the same as the multiplicative law that we had on uh, the um, field basically okay so we've just restricted it down a bit we said we don't care about all these other elements here I don't want all of those listed in this column I just want uh, the elements K listed there um, basically we're getting all of these axioms holding for free okay and then the final axiom that you need is that uh, if you take the multiplicative identity within the field K okay so this is the multiplicative identity within the field K and you multiply that by any vector X then that should give you that vector x back again. Now again, this is going to hold because the multiplicative identity in the field k is the same as the multiplicative identity in the field L. Because remember, k is a subfield of the field L. So 1 is also in L, and it's also the multiplicative identity within L. So 1 times anything in the field L is just that thing back again, and therefore uh, the 1 multiplied by any vector in L is um, that vector back again. So all of the axioms of um, vector spaces holds true basically uh, for these field extensions. Okay, so that is why you can consider uh, the larger field L as a vector space over the smaller field K and all of the axioms hold nicely true. Now, we're going to define something known as the degree of a field extension, which is abbreviated as square brackets, and then you put the field extension within it, and then close the square brackets like this. So we're going to define this, well, this, this is just the symbols to mean degree of the field extension. Okay, now, what, how are we going to define this? Well, basically, as soon as you have um, said that you have a vector space, what you can do is create a basis, okay? So you can create a basis uh, for the vector space L over the scalar field K. And that basis then has a dimension, which is the number of basis elements that you need, basically. Okay, so for instance, to use the archetypal examples, okay, if we look at the real vector spaces where we have, let's say, R3 is a vector space over the field of real numbers, Basically, uh, the basis for this, we'd create one basis element which went this way, one which went that way, and one which went that way. And that would allow us to um, express any element in there as a combination, a linear combination of these three basis elements. So E1, E2, and E3. And all we'd have to do is multiply each of these by a certain element of the field of real numbers. So R1, and we'd add it to R2 and we'd add it to R3, okay? And then the um, vector space, the dimension of the vector space would be how many basis elements did you need uh, in order to span the whole uh, space, basically. So the degree of the field extension is going to be the dimension of the vector space L over the scalar field K, basically. So this is going to be the dimension of the vector space L okay where you're viewing it as being a vector space over the field k okay over i should probably put over k there right okay so that's how we're going to define the de degree of the field extension basically okay so let's have some quite simple examples initially 
Okay, so let's do a nice simple example. So we'll start off with our small field as the field of rational numbers. Okay, and we'll create now a field extension. And the field extension we'll create is a plus b times the square root of 2, where both a and b are elements of the rational numbers. Now we saw in the previous videos on field extensions that this was a uh, field basically, and of course it is a field extension of the rationals because all the rationals will be contained within this.